Hi, I'm Spencer Krauss. I've been building robots for over 20 years. In that time, I've seen a lot of interesting things and I've heard a lot of interesting stories. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is a place where my colleagues and I can relax, have a drink, and talk about some of the crazier things we've seen at work and some of the experiences we've had that have gotten us to where we are today. Subscribe today to join the collaboration. Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is the Greek Gadget Guru. The Greek Gadget Guru. Also known as Pavlos. Um, thanks for unmasking, bud. Yes, I am Pavlos. Yep. It's a lot easier to talk to a microphone when you don't have a giant obstruction. So uh, this, is, this is nice. So you get to see me. Yeah. And uh, so if you came from my channel, I posted like a teaser to essentially give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about. We've got these gadgets here, uh, the helmet that goes with this, which is a project that I was working on with Spencer. I started going to the University of Pittsburgh for computer engineering and I'm finishing up my junior year going into my senior year. So I'm going to be talking about what I've learned, um, the different skills that I've applied from actually working with Spencer to my own creation, which he'd be so proud. Yeah, and, actually, I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I use some of it, even use some of his equipment. Uh, he has like a little maker space, uh, like a little lab to build. It's called a shop. Yeah, shop. <laughs> that you got to you got to make establish that that line of distinguishment. Yeah, uh, very distinct. Very important details. Uh, yeah. What else? Oh, uh, so this this project here is something that I built in my junior design class. It's really fun. Um, Basically, you have a sound laser. I just, I guess, I just like using lasers for everything. It's a direct. It's a. It's a speaker that I can point, and and it will sound like it's someone's. The sound is right in front of your face, but if you're like three feet to the left or right, you can barely hear anything. Like it sounds muffled. It, you can tell that it's coming from wherever I'm pointing. It's a directional speaker. Um, so I built it into this. It is kind of cool. We we tried it out before we started recording, yes. and I had this sexy drill battery with a three D printed mount. Um, so that just goes. It's in pretty there. slick. Yeah, USB C, yeah. and uh, yeah. So I'm just showing you that, and then we're actually going to be we talk about this in our collaboration. So for people listening that don't have video, what Pavlos is pointing to is a backpack with a giant laser on it that aims the laser based on where your head is looking. It was supposed to be a surprise, you just spoiled it. Oh, I'm You're sorry. Supposed to, man, don't skip that part of the video, watch everything. Should we cut that out? And no, I'm just, I'm messing right. with you. I, but, so okay, so we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah, so the, this is like the Predator shoulder mounted laser. Uh, we started this in like 2020. We're gonna get to all that stuff. And then Spencer, has a really beefy resume of all the stuff that he's done from working at SpaceX to uh, owning his own engineering company, SKA Custom Robots and Machines, yeah, right? Yeah, Got it. it. Yeah. And uh, and how, how we started collaborating on this project and some of the challenges. And then uh, he's gonna be talking about what are some things that he's done to kind of stand out um, when applying to schools or when he, cause he really excelled within robotics, uh, also some of his experiences and, you know, what, what did he take from school and apply to his, to his projects and what did he learn from his own outside the classroom learning that he's been able to do and how you can improve, uh, your abilities as a maker, or how do you stand out? How do you get better at this stuff? What tools do you need, maybe? Or if you want to get a master's degree in robotics, like how you get to that yeah, point? Like, I mean, sounds so so cool. a lot of in between. There's there's I want to be plenty of ways. Like, to, how do I do that to know? get into this? So. Yeah, I bet that's a big Google search term. Like, how do I become like Iron Man? What did he study in college? Yeah, a combination of you and me. It's just like physics or something. Yeah. So for my listeners who, who don't know who Greek Gadget Guru is yet, uh, hopefully you saw the other two episodes he was on, but if you didn't... Uh, did we do two? Yeah, we did two. Wow. So Pavlos oh, makes mask superhero gadgets on YouTube. Uh, he's got a channel that's awesome. 
he uh, he makes this stuff really accessible. So he creates it using tech that a lot of people can build at home. It, it's super interesting and promotes education, which I'm a big proponent of. And um, you know, he he makes awesome tech that's accessible for a lot of people. And uh, yeah, uh, he's like the the you know I James like Bond make, Sue of YouTube. I like to make stuff. He's got like six hundred thousand and twelve. The the, the question, uh, the the thing is uh, that the really inspired me. <laughs> the thing that inspired me was you know I'll be playing this video game, and there'd be this awesome gadget like uh, from Black Ops Two, the ballistic knife, and I'm like playing this video game, I'm like wait that's just a spring and it shoots the knife out, and I'm just like I want that, so I just go out and hack a like a, a cr extendable crutch you go to Home Depot and grab some springs jam it in there and go on eBay and buy you some you build it out of a crutch yeah like the that's extending awesome. part of a crutch yeah, so you know because cool. you press those two buttons and it just allows it to spring but obviously it's got to be strong because it's holding up your weight you know so I'm like oh that's that should hold a lot of you know <laughs> compressed spring power uh, potential energy and uh, then I went to uh, eBay and bought some sketchy throwing knives and JB welded it on there and 1.2 million views later, I'm YouTube famous. And I'm making, you know, I remember when I started, I got like the first data. Um, first on YouTube, what, that, what happens, at least the way that they, they unrolled their um, partner creator program or whatever, um, you would put a video on there and it was kind of like a la carte of what you could monetize. It was only after it reached a certain threshold there's a, almost like a view time velocity or acceleration. If it gets a certain amount of views within a short period of time, it's you know growing that potent, it's growing that expanding quickly, they would say, hey, like this is something we should monetize. So I'd get that email. And then after a while, once you have that track record of just you know uploading content that consistently, that's still consistently drawing an audience, they, oh, uh, I think that they extended the partnership program. Uh, and then they changed things years ago, so they kind of dropped the curtain. Um, when you're when you're like in high school and you're you're making you know a nice little check of a couple hundred dollars, it was a big deal, and it just kept snowballing. Uh, and then I graduated college the first time, went into a career that I felt like really wasn't for me. It was kind of like family was nudging me in that direction, and I was okay with it. But I realized, hey, I'm a huge nerd and I like building gadgets, I don't know what this field is gonna do for me. It's just a paycheck at the end of the day and I wanna really enjoy what I do and be proud of it. Um, so I decided, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I am gonna go back to school. So I'm now 29 going on 30 and there's a lot of kids in my class, I call them kids, because when you're 30 and they're 20, 10 year difference is half their life and you literally, people's jaw drop whenever you tell them that you're almost 30, because it's 10 years is a big deal to them. You know, like 30 is, a, you know, oh my God, I'm gonna be 30 when I, not a big deal. But I, I have had Agreed. Um, some funny stories where I was working on this lab and I messaged one of my um, friends and he said, oh yeah, come over and um, I'll take a look at your, you know, we can debug the, the circuit or debug the code. Uh, but I'm having people over, so uh, you know, feel free to, to stop by, whatever. So I get there, and there's like a full-on college party. They had a beer pong table, and they're like, "You ever played beer pong before?" I'm like, "No. How do you play?" And I'm like, <laughs> like, "Oh, you gotta throw it in the cup. Okay, yeah, that's easy." And like making all the shots, I'm like, "Wow, you're really good." I'm like, "Wow, I'm a natural." And then uh, you know, I'm guessing like, you'd played before. Yeah, of course. <laughs> 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 And then I'm like, they're like, so you got a fake ID? I'm like, no, I have a real ID. Oh, did you like buy it from a friend or something? Like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm almost 30. Like, you know, I've been able to drink for as much time as half your life. It's, you know, but uh, I'll take it as a compliment. I guess it's all those yeah, years sure. of uh, being a recluse, uh, staying inside and, and tinkering on all these gadgets. I'm 34. People think I'm 45. That makes so me feel really I'm bad. Jealous. I'm going to start losing my hair. That's ah, I, I've got particularly <laughs> bad genes in that regard. I don't think it's necessarily going to happen to Did you. Did that hurt? Are you offended? No, nah, I don't give a shit. Okay, thank you. 
Anyway, um, okay, so you're at this college party. People think you're yeah. So I mean, it, there's just there's yeah. definitely like something that you have to navigate at college, going a little later than most. And so uh, I'm happy to see that some of the skills, well, actually a lot of the skills that I've applied to different projects is really applicable, especially to some of the design projects that I've done, like junior design. Uh, that's where I built this. Uh, this is a directional speaker. Uh, this was kind of inspired by some of the manufacturing uh, prototyping styles that I learned from Spencer whenever I was working on this. Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah. But uh, talk about this for a second. Uh, this is probably going to end up being my senior design project. Uh, and I've definitely learned a lot of new skills since being at the University of Pittsburgh, which I'm going for computer engineering. And basically, you know, how do you organize? How do you put together build materials? Um, how do you uh, debug using oscilloscope? That, that applied to this, uh, making my own print circuit boards. So if I want to take something that, you know, I would typically have to buy all these off the shelf components from uh, eBay or Amazon and jam them into this little box. Well, now I can figure out what the components are, make my own board. And, you know, instead of a laser watch being the size of a deck of cards, it's like, you know, as thin and small as my Apple watch. So that's going to give me a lot of new abilities as a creator. So the plan is to uh, well, probably gra graduate, obviously, uh, get some stability within the job field. And then what I'd like to do is slowly transition into making content and uh, having almost like a, uh, a store or uh, some sort of business model where I can sell maybe kits or something along those lines. Uh, Spencer's got a business degree, so maybe he could help me with that. But Happy to talk. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, content creation is really challenging. Uh, that's and especially with engineering. So I apologize for the absence, and uh, I hope everyone's been well. I hope I didn't give everyone a heart attack. Cause like you know, we get comments that are like, "Did he die?" I'm like, no. But um, yeah. So it's it's been a crazy ride. But uh, to talk about this project, um, do you want to tell them about? Yeah, sure. What's been so, going on? Uh, basically, uh, Pavlos and I met at a maker space uh, here in Pittsburgh, and um, we were having a beer, and we just hit it off pretty immediately. That intelligent dude, uh, very like-minded, and we're talking, and you know, Pavlos mentioned his YouTube channel, and I'd seen it before, and actually was a fan. And I, 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 I remember that you were like, Greek as you guru, right? Like. What? I didn't recognize your face. But like right. when you oh, start talking about what you did. I'm wearing a mask all the time. Usually yeah. I, wear, I wear this mask with LEDs. Uh, it's yeah. difficult to enunciate. But when you start talking about what you did, I mean, it was immediately apparent that that was you. Yeah, he so. took a, like, he started going on a whiteboard and sketching out stuff and, you know, making these block diagrams of the different systems. Like his brain just went full engineering mode. Yeah, but we didn't, I don't think we had the idea yet. I think we kind of arrived at that together. So I, I've, Feel like we spitballed it or did you know you wanted to make this i knew exactly what i wanted okay, i said so i want to have a predator laser shoulder mounted laser that wherever i look it will aim so that i can burn things i thought that the head tracking was was something i i pitched you probably did i could be wrong um but i didn't know how achievable that was i Ideally, I'd have like a camera and it would auto focus or, you know, you could just like have a little clicker and, and a little heads up. Well, I think that's what it was. So I think it was originally you wanted to auto target, you know, things in the environment. And I talked you into head tracking because it was an easier engineering problem. Yeah. You're lazy. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Total lazy, I, lazy ass. I don't know where I here. put a camera on this thing because it'd have to... There's a lot of wires. Well, it's also, it's, it's a lot of wires. I mean, it, it's achievable, but it's a lot of work to do computer vision where the way that we, we built this and, and are continuing to build this is it uses what's called an inertial measurement unit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a few of them being averaged together because we use kind of less expensive ones to save money on the build. Um, we take measurements from those, we average them up, and then we compare against inertial measurement units in the backpack 
and it does some math and then it's able to aim the laser at things it's looking at. So we, we sort of spit all that together. And science. That was, yeah, it, yeah, science. There's some science that goes into it and it, it's magic. Yeah. Uh, but when the black smoke leaves it, <laughs> magic's gone and it doesn't work. And that's what makes <laughs> electronics and engineering. I don't think we've released the smoke in this one yet. So that, for people listening, like releasing the black smoke is when you, you screw up and and this was I something used to do battle bonds. This was pretty common, right? Like you you wire something up, like sleep deprived on four Red Bulls, and uh, you know you'd be in the pit area and you would put it together and you'd short something against the chassis and it would smoke and then you'd fry a board. Yeah, it doesn't work. And it's yeah. because the magic smoke left it. Yeah, if the magic it. smoke went back in it, it would work. And that's <laughs> science. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious. Is what it is. <laughs> but. but uh, yeah, we haven't had the magic smoke yet, but it could blind you instantly, even if that's it was, correct. So, 100%. it's uh, an infrared laser, right? That we switched to. No, so it was originally a fiber optic infrared laser, but that was working at like one point five volts at like too? fifty amps. And we had to use that really sketchy TI converter, and it didn't have. It was like surface mounted, and it scared me. And I was trying to like, I made this little <laughs> thing. I remember that, yeah, with the wires have, coming like, off. Yeah, you had to have yeah. huge wires because of the amount of current, and then it just looked like this little squid. It was ugly, so we, we pitched that idea. Yeah. I spent a lot of money on it. it I'm a little salty. Yeah. But it's okay. I spent a lot of time. <laughs> you did. You did. But uh, it was fun. I mean, so like yeah. the, way we, the way we worked on this is, um, you know, Pavlos came by my shop. Like once we kind of hit it off and decided we wanted to do it, Pavlos came by my shop and we just kind of spent long days and we did it in like the traditional prototyping style. So like... We would sort of figure out what we wanted. We'd come up with a basic block diagram of what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And then we would start building the blocks and putting them together. And so, um, you know, it's it's kind of a, it's more of like a early stage startups do this. Um, makers do this a lot. Hobbyists do it. Um, I'm sure the Hacksmith builds things that way all the time. Um, and it's it's pretty rudimentary. But for a system of this scale, you can kind of get away with it. When you start to get into bigger engineered systems, like multi-robot fleets, like some of the stuff I work on these days, I mean, you have to start doing like real systems engineering and like hardcore diagramming and requirements and stuff. But I think that would be ridiculous for some like, like this is a project that you can do as Amateur a Amateur level. Well, I wouldn't, it's, it's, a, it's a cut above that, but it's still, yeah. you know, you can, you can hack it if you know what you're doing. I started building robots when I was 12 years old. Um, and I'm 34 now, so you know if you count my hobbyist experience, I've got 22 years of experience building robots, and so not bad. Thanks. <laughs> That's I can, I can hack it pretty most good. Of my peers in my class. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's really awesome. Thanks. Um, do we want to take a look under the hood here and kind of explain everything? Yeah, sure. All right. So pretty complicated stuff, but I had a lot of fun. Learned a lot. Uh, Spencer taught me all about all the different, uh, using Delrin specifically, I didn't even know that existed. And you can see I applied the same sort of build style to my junior design project. Uh, Anyone with a laser cutter should know about Delrin. Yeah, it's the best. I recommended it for um, one of the battle bots that's for our um, automation, uh, robotics and automation society at Pitt. Nice. Yeah, they were 3D printing like the entire chassis and the girl brought in the motor and the wheel didn't even touch the, like it was, it's kind of like one of those things like where you put the cart before the horse type of thing. Like yep. she 3D printed this thing that took like four days and then didn't even cat in all the other part components. It was, but um, yeah. Uh, also like the cabling and uh, just battery management, stuff like that. Yeah, it. I've definitely learned a lot from Spencer, so um, thankful Thanks, Bob. for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. And and it's it, always and fun to like mentor someone receptive and, and interested in the stuff. Uh, I'm grateful to people who taught me what I know, and yeah. that's that's advice. If you're listening and you want to know how to get into this, find yourself a good mentor, somebody who's been down the road and, and you know is willing to teach, and then ask them small little bits that are like manageable, so you're not burdening their schedule, and, and just kind of you know be like, hey, I, I'm interested in what you do how'd you do this or like how do you do that or yeah. like i was thinking of doing this what do you how would you go about it and for them it'll be intellectually stimulating as it was for me when pavlos came to me with this 
And for you, um, as I did when I had mentors and I have mentors now in, in my career and, and learning about building things even before my career, um, you learn a heck of a lot just from smarter people, not yeah. smarter people, but more experienced people mm -hmm. you know, that have been doing this for a while. I would say if you are limited on your access to components uh, and you and tools, um, you can buy used stuff. I, I would say three essential tools that you need to be able to get into making stuff, which is why I started is, uh, first one is a soldering iron. That opens up absolutely the entire world of electronics because then you can take apart old radios and you can you know learn about capacitors because you probably touch one and you get shocked. <laughs> like I've done that so many times. I remember <laughs> one of my first projects was taking apart a, uh, a disposable camera which has that like uh, large capacitor to create that flash. You know, oh, and yeah. I would make like stun guns out of it. We did that too. Yeah, it's fun. Um, yeah, so like, but I had to be, learn how to solder, so I looked up YouTube videos, you know, and now, you know, at this time, I think like, you could still go to a Radio Shack and buy that stuff, but now you just have, you know, Amazon Prime. So, uh, even if you don't have a soldering iron, take some sort of heating filament from, some, I don't know, and put it, like a battery Dude, through it. they're $10 or, on Amazon. I don't know, I'm thinking about my audience <laughs> that's like, in other countries, maybe. All right, all right, fair enough. Or heat up a nail, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they have like butane torch soldering torches, but yeah. Like, well, that's okay. how they used to do it back in the day. So I've actually got an antique soldering iron that's a big chunk of copper with like steel bits wound around it. And then it goes into a wooden handle. And I mean, you think about like all your irons in the fire. This is a soldering iron that's designed to be left in a fire, heated up, and then used to solder. There you go. It's a big a chunk of copper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Genius. Genius. From where it started. <laughs> cool, yeah, I always thought I'd be great in the zombie apocalypse. Just like, there we go, that's a great example. But yeah, I mean, uh, so definitely a soldering iron, so you get opening up old electronics, taking stuff apart, um, that's number one. I would say number two, for me, um, I, I would have to say a Dremel tool. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is a great tool for anyone starting yeah. out in particular. Like. I got my first one. Affiliate I was, link in the description. <laughs> I don't know. We'll make it. We'll make it bundle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got my first one when I was twelve years old. Uh, that's maybe funny 13. that you. We both had that. Yeah, that. That's about when I got mine. For, I got yeah. it for Christmas. I, I think I got mine for Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So a Dremel tool is just. Uh, it's you can get really creative with it. I actually have a Dremel mount that turns it into a drill press, and I use that for uh, countersinking uh, some of the different bolts here that I don't really want sticking off the, the panel. Like a lot of these are, uh, I think pan head is what they call it. I don't care about that, but if there's a really small tolerance and I need, uh, like for example, for this part that comes off, yeah, I needed something easy and the Dremel, you can even 3D print stuff, uh, mounts, I've seen people take their Dremels and mount it into, make us tiny little belt sander or, you know, Pretty cool. The DIY community with people make belt stuff. sanders out of Dremels. Yeah, it's cool. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I like it. They're creative. They're, there's a lot of other ones. Where do they get the sanding belt just off like another belt sander and then the Dremel drives it? Um, I don't exactly remember. I think, yeah, I think it's that. Um, there's definitely small belt sanders for jewelers and stuff like that. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like if you don't plug a Dremel into that, put a bearing on like a shoulder bolt, and then you got the other side and you're good to go. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, so that's the first one, because you cause you can cut metal, you can grind stuff, you can sharpen stuff, you can polish things, you can, if you- If you get a Strip screw, a bolt. Yep. Is yep. that what you're gonna say? That's what I was gonna say. If you strip you a bolt, you just cut around that part, you know, with the Dremel, is that what you're or, gonna say? Or, 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 you can go at a 90 degree angle you can cut a slot and use a flathead screwdriver to get it out. Oh, uh, that's smart too. Yeah. yeah, but if I'm thinking of the the those um, recessed screw holes, like they put on toys, where you need like a special screwdriver or something to get in there, and it's so deep down you can't reach the Dremel, so you just have to cut out, you know, cut around because you don't care about the toy because it's broken or whatever. You just want the electronics that are inside because. It has a voice recorder that you <laughs> like, you know, there was like a McDonald's toy. I was like, oh, I want to put this voice recorder in a, in a watch. I don't want it in this stupid thing. So I, you know, took it apart, but they had a weird screw. So I just 
Took a little, yeah, that's good. Um, I was, what would you say is the third one? Okay, so Sodder and Iron I, Dremel. I put I mean, zero thought that, into this before it, but it was just been on the tip of my tongue. I've got a weird one that people may not find interesting, but is cool to me, and this is eclectic. It may not belong on this list, but I'll say it anyway. Did uh, you say calipers? I was going to say Nipex pliers wrench. That's so weird. Don't <laughs> edit that out. I'm joking. I know he's talking about it. It's like pliers that instead of moving like this, they move like this. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, you can... You can use it to get metal that's bent that you want to be flat, flat again by squeezing it like it's a vice. Uh, you can use it to operate on any hex head bolt. Um, I don't know. They're they're great. You can throw all your crescent wrenches in the garbage when you get one of these. Yeah. So I don't know, but maybe it's not like one of the three. So yeah, I would say for multimeter, for multimeter. Get yourself a multimeter. Be able to see what voltage is coming out the other end of your thing. That you should probably buy that when you buy the soldering iron. In fact, yeah, and you can get them for like well, like ten bucks probably for an entry yeah, level. Yeah, go to Harbor Freight. Spend thirty bucks and get like a really decent one on Amazon. Spend one hundred twenty bucks and get a fluke. You know, I mean, you can you can kind of you know sort of pick your your level of quality there, and it'll tell you voltage. It'll tell you the amount of current you're drawing if you hook mm -hmm. it up in series as opposed to in parallel. Um, it'll tell you um, you know a, a bunch of you can test batteries with some of them. Uh, it's it's a good you know starter. I'm still thinking about my third then. one. <laughs> Sorry, you don't think it's a multimeter? Uh, that's pretty good. All right, what, like, what would you pick? You'd have to understand electronics for it to even mean anything. Well, if it's in for the soldering iron though, like, but how like are you think gonna about know your that... first build, it was okay. it was literally battery plus wire plus LED does the, does the LED light, light up? Battery well, plus I'm older wire than you. plus motor equals movement. Uh, LEDs Switch didn't exist when I started. I used way. incandescent light bulbs. But yeah. Yeah. So, um, hmm. all right. Yeah. That's I like, would probably say, I would probably say a screwdriver set. Or, oh, I didn't so know that counted. Take, take, I said tools. All right. All right. So you can take apart everything. Like the, like you the, definitely should have screwdrivers. Yeah. yeah the, the crazy first. weird bits that, you know, um, you might see in like an iFix it. So anyway, that's, I would say, you can get a good set for like ten bucks of like little. Everything's ten dollars in, in your world. Like, is yeah. it like a ten below store that I don't know about? It's There's... called Amazon. <laughs> yes, maybe. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say, without a doubt, soldering iron and Dremel tool that will do a lot of stuff for you. And then you know, those have their you know soldering goes into welding, and uh, Dremel tool goes into well, um, goes into metal work, and yeah. Allows you to, you can cut metal now or plastic. It, it's a game changer. Yeah. Uh, and then that opens up the door to like the bandsaw and the grinder uh, angle. Yeah. Grinder, it's like, it's like the skill set grinder. you see in a video game. And so it's like yeah. you master the skill and you just keep progressing. And then, oh, like I don't want to do, like I'm soldering, but I want to do more. Oh, to be fair, I know how to solder like a champ. I can't weld for crap. Like, hey, uh, yeah, that's that's too high level. You need to unlock the other paths before you get there. Yeah, can that's how it weld? works. I've done welding. All right. What, what kind Dep of welding? What kind of welding? Um, do you do? I think MIG welding is probably the easiest. Yeah, for sure it is. Because it's, it's just a hot glue gun of welding. Yeah, uh, TIG welding, scary. So I sort of, well, I I can MIG sort of, but I'm not great at it. And then I have I'm horrible with a TIG welder, so I've tried to like TIG aluminum, and it is. Not pretty. I always have somebody else weld aluminum for me. I feel like that's difficult in general. But anyway, moving on to the next subject. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. I've been having fun talking about tools, but we can do that. I like tools. Sponsor yeah, me. Nipex pliers. <laughs> you said they don't need that, but I mean, you don't. It's not as basic as screwdrivers. Yeah. So yeah, you know we can. You know how to weld and you can just take scrap metal and make your own Nipex pliers. Done. Yep. Yep. And a Dremel tool to make the, yeah, whatever. Uh, so, so, bah. I guess, what are some of the things you've learned since you started going to the University of Pittsburgh? That, you know, um, I guess we talked about that a little bit. But. Yeah, so, let's just show them this, because this is actually something yeah, I Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so, this is a, my junior design project, as I talked about a little bit earlier. Um. This was a lot of fun to build. I, my teacher told me, I win. You got the best one. That was that was a good that was a good validation. Uh, 
that all my you know skills were able to come together and build something that impressed, impressed even a PhD in computer engineering. Uh, now granted, I'm a student, but he, he felt like I really went above and beyond. And he actually asked me to, to come to his class for this semester and show everyone this, uh, which, was, nice. which was really cool. Now, that's awesome. Now everyone's like, oh, that's Paul. Hey, what's up, Pavlos? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, so, it's actually pretty good ergonomics too. I'm looking at where the buttons are relative to your thumb. Yeah, I wanted. Uh, I originally I was gonna make it look like, uh, like a folding. You ever see one of those folding pistols that looks like a briefcase and it like folds out like a flashlight? I think so vaguely, I think it's called the FMG FMG nine or something. Really yeah. cool design. Like it, you know, it has a handle and you press a button and it just folds out and. You probably see it in Call of Duty, but you know this was for a school project, and I was making something that looked like a concealable firearm. So I scrapped that idea after <laughs> wasting lots of time over Christmas break, and I decided, okay, well, I want to be able to have this thing in public, but not attract people because it looks dangerous. Can I can I just kind of emphasize something you just said there, which I think is important to What's people that? that are going to make it in this community or in, in this profession? No. So you said after wasting a lot of time over Christmas break. Yeah. That means you're passionate enough about this that you took your free time and you spent it on making stuff. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's what it takes to be really good at this for anyone listening. Like the people that really, really, really innovate and build the best stuff you love can't building buy that stuff. on Amazon. Well, you can't learn it in school either. Like you have to be driven to want to make things. Yeah. Like people that, that – you know, want to make things and are, are excited by making things and do it during their free time, make better stuff than people that don't. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of people that graduate with PhD in engineering, electrical engineering, and they've picked up a soldering iron maybe like twice. And, uh, that's fine. But I think that there's a lot of wasted potential there. Um, and so, you know, if you're more of hands-on and you, like to learn and take on different challenges. Uh, I went to a uh, like a career day and I was talking to one of the recruiters and I told him about this project and he was really impressed and, and I said, I'm looking for internships and he said, well, we're only taking internships for next summer, but we'd still hire you. And I think better than nice. an internship would be a digital portfolio. So, you know, I'm gonna have to go back and take video clips of all my builds and you know have a write-up to explain what i did and uh that should be fun but to be able to not just hand someone a piece of paper with some text on it but you know have hand them a link or send them a link oh i always want to see that more than i want to see an internship or yeah. like a, a resume like it's yeah. way better to see i'm gonna like bring videos. an ipad and like have a like a slideshow with my videos or something. that makes you stand out like as somebody Bring who iPad to hires me. a decent amount of engineers like when i look at people's resumes it's kind of boring because like you see thousands of those but when somebody shows you a video of something they made or they bring in a cool thing they made <laughs> or you know they've got you know pictures of things they made even like a portfolio i mean that's that gets my attention as, as somebody that's hiring you know technical people yeah and it shows dedication to an extent because you know and it's more interesting for the interviewer like think about totally. it totally like, do you want to read text on a page or do you want to see cool things that someone took the time to build you want to see cool things and they want to see cool things now watch cool things so we've got a bunch of little dials here this controls the channel there's 12 different audio that are preset and you can upload them using uh micro usb like a flash drive um there's like a module in there. And then this is to control the cooling fan because it's taking this drill battery, which is 24 volts, and it's uh, up, uh, it's upgrading it, or no, uh, boosting it to actually make, wait, I think it's, yeah, no, 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 it's actually operating at 15 volts, but it raises the current of the sound signal. Um, and then, this is to control the volume of the actual microphone. But it raises the current or the voltage? So they have to be high amplitude. So don't you raise the current to raise the amplitude? I would think the voltage, but that's just intuitive. I'm not an audio engineer. No worries. I should probably know that. Yeah. But 
Well, because you, you pull current. I don't think you can raise that because there's only so much that a given power source will Maybe I'm just thinking amplitude and amps. That makes sense, yeah. Mm. So, anyway, uh, let's just show you. So, you got two buttons here. Uh, if you press this red button once, it clicks in, it stays locked. You know, it's one of those locking switches. So you have it pressed out. This is gonna play the audio that I have set here. Just kidding. Is it not working now? Oh no. That's funny. Oh, now it's, I hear the fan spin up. Oh, did I forget how it works? That's farting. So, where are the microphones here? So, if I point at his microphone. It sounds like a siren. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna play like a long soundtrack. So, this is the Rick Roll song. <laughs> so, if I point it. So oh, that's pretty cool. It actually sounds really good for your mic because you're hitting the diaphragm like pretty head on there. That's interesting because these are side facing mics. So if you talk into the tip, it doesn't really work. But which your point at mine. But yeah, when you talk into the side, it's supposed to work. So that's actually. Wait, hold on. Try. I'm, I'm trying point, to be point at mine again. No. Oh, it's weird. I've never. I guess I've never pointed this at an actual object that is trying to capture audio in such a small area, but. So I can, I can hear my audio, but I feel like I need a directional laser on this thing to show where it's pointing. And you told me that was a stupid idea. But I like, it it's not, idea. it's, you did. And I'm sorry. It, it's definitely <laughs> not, it's definitely not straight and parallel to this. But yeah, you can tell. I point it this way. So you know I'm a cynical engineer. <laughs> but anyway, you can also talk into this bum, thing. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so the second thing with this microphone is you create a feedback loop. So I use, I programmed, uh, I made my own microcontroller. I basically made my own Arduino. I call it the Pavlino. And <laughs> That's what you called it. In my own head, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Unofficially. The Pavlino. We've got the SK Arduino for one of our things. <laughs> cool. You, no, you don't. Do you really? We really do. It's. A, I'll show you the file later if you don't blame me. I'm jealous. So, yeah, th there's like a way to connect the screen and all that. Anyway, that's boring. There is a range finder here, which is supposed to be up to 10 meters. And then this is supposed to be up to 10 meters. So they're, you know, fairly in sync as far as their uh, cost and blah, blah. And so it does an equation to figure out depending on the distance of the person, how much should you create the delay to factor in the speed of sound? Because uh, it's supposed to be a 0 0.2 second delay. And it's kind of like if you've ever been on a phone call and you start to hear some weird echo, it's very disruptive. Hearing your own voice at a 0.2 second delay creates this uh, feedback loop and they call it speech jamming. Uh, there was a uh, a research article that was put out years ago by some uh, university, I think it was in Japan, and they made this thing that looked like a lollipop and it was very ugly and I didn't like it at all. And so I wanted to make something really cool that would serve as a good junior design project and it, you know, this met all the criteria. But I'm gonna go ahead and show how this works. So you press this button here and uh, essentially with these two buttons, you have one to press for the audio sample. This one just fires the laser. So. All right, so it's just interference, white noise. That is strange. Well, so what's happening is, oh, that was weird. I thought that was. When you say weird. the laser, do you mean the ranger? No, no, I want like an aiming sight. I actually want it to be yeah. infrared and I want to have like night vision goggles so I, I can point it at people, but they can't see they're being pointed at, but it's too expensive and I'm a college student. And what would it cost to do that? Just like your estate to to get night vision goggles. Uh, I, I guess it's not the laser; it's the goggles. Well, so I have this. The yeah, the goggles. Um, if you want a monocle, you could get like if you want something that's nice and sexy and small, 
uh, like three hundred dollars. All right, that's not horrible. And then the next one up has like Wi-Fi, so you can send it to your phone and record it and all that, which is what I want. Nice. How much is that? I think like four four hundred or. It's not the worst. Yeah, but I'm poor because well, I'm a college student. We could we could sponsor it. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I'd like that. Yeah, but it'd be so simple because I would literally just be putting it on here. Yeah, uh, that could be fun. Let's let's talk after the pod. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll film a video out in, in the field, and we'll go to like Starbucks and we'll like start playing sounds of. Oh wait, like when we're in public. Is that a fart? Yeah, we get some really <laughs> nasty. We like 12, 12 fart noises. Like one if you had a bean burrito, one that like silent but deadly. Uh, you know, we're getting into that that uncharted territory. Don't talk about those things. But you know what I'm talking about. Imagine being able... I feel like you could have an entire prank channel where you can say something to someone or make a sound that appears as if it's the wall is talking. So you have like this creepy... Well, that was what's interesting about it is we were playing around with that before we started and you were pointing it just in different places and it sounded like the sound was coming from there. Like it's Halloween time. And yeah. someone's sitting at Starbucks sipping their coffee, and all of a sudden they hear. <laughs> like, you could really mess with someone, and if you had a hidden camera or something, that could be some really funny content. But eventually it would catch on, and we'd have to do the next thing, and then you could sponsor that video. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, like Ali G over here. Yeah. All right, so go ahead and talk into this. It's, it's okay. very. Uh, check, check, check. Talking, talking, talking. Uh, I'll take off one of my headphones. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm talking. Still, still here in static. You can't hear it. Uh, no, not yet. It's, it sounds like static. Is that is it. wild. I've should, never. Should we edit that, out? that is not a true to. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. <laughs> but anyway, um, what's supposed to happen is I record his audio. Because this is a boom microphone, it's a directional microphone, and this is a directional speaker. So I record his audio, uh, delay it at a, a 0.2 second, which it does the feedback loop jamming in your brain, and send it back to him. So, well, it's definitely true, right? I've been on cell phone conversations with people where, like, there's a delay because I hear myself through their speaker phone, and I cannot even think straight. So that's definitely real, um, but yeah, it's very disruptive. Yeah. But with these microphones, um, it just sounds annoying. But the physics behind this are pretty cool. Um, if you can s start with imagining how some people can can sing into a microphone at a really high pitch and then it breaks. To my understanding, the physics of that is... You mean like with a glass? Yeah, glass. Yeah. What did I say? It's a microphone. microphone. No, a glass. Got so it. you have a wine glass and you yell into it and, it's, and it breaks. My understanding is there's a resonant frequency of the glass, and when you match, what are you looking at? Oh, there's a light I could see through the uh, tripod mount that was oh, yeah. on the bottom. To yeah. program this thing, because it uses a, a microcontroller, I had to use this plug-in thing, because before on our other project, you had to take the chip, put it onto a real Arduino, program it, take it off, and put it into is your- Is that a heat set uh, quarter 20 you used for the tripod mount? Yep. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I got that from you. There. Yeah, thank it's you. It's nice. Uh, yeah, Spencer has a McMaster car in his house, like basically in his house setup. It's nice. Uh, <laughs> a lot I like of parts. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where was I? So we're done with the physics. Oh of yeah. That so the physics the of it, uh, essentially, I say that word a lot because it makes me sound smart. <laughs> what you have too. going That's on? Most of what I got from grad school was ways to sound smarter. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's, you learn something new every day. You get big words. <laughs> so this, these are all transducers. They're sending out ultrasonic frequencies. So you're putting in the audio, you're turning it into the uh, 60 hertz. And then because all these are going in parallel, but because they're also high amplitude, at 60 hertz, the wavelength is pretty much like a centimeter wide. And the sound energy, if that makes any sense, the, the amplitude of the, of the wave, is confined to that space and so uh, it actually vibrates the air in between all of the different trans transducers so the sound is actually the air is acting like the diaphragm on a drum you know 
the air is vibrating. So that's why you can point this and at 60 hertz, you can't hear that sound at, at that frequency. Um, but when you come in, in line with it, you can hear the sound. And then especially whenever it hits an object, I'd imagine that it depropagates into lower frequencies because it's you know, slowing down and that's when you can actually hear it. And that's pretty cool. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know enough about sound yeah. engineering to fully understand But as far it, as the glass description, it's yeah. uh, when, you, when you have two frequencies, uh, the resonant frequency of the glass and the, reson and the uh, resonation of your voice yelling, it amplifies and that's why the glass explodes, to my understanding. Is that, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I don't, like I said, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Engineer. I'm gonna go, it sounds smarter than what your response is, so we're gonna say that I'm right. All right. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like if someone, if p two people grabbed the end of a, a carpet and went like this, the waves would come come together at the same time and they would push something. It's kind of like when you yeah. get du double bounced on a trampoline. trampoline. Yeah. Sort of. So you're talking about constructive interference? It's constructive interference. I think that's the double bounce effect. By the way, just a separate thing. Is this a custom piece that you made to guard the front of it or did that ship with that ultra? Yeah, I made this because I sweet. wanted to be able to put this on the table yeah, right. and be able to. It's a nice touch. Yeah, yeah I, I added like that. that last. I didn't want, it, I thought it looked a little naked without it. And yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's better with, like I think that's a, that's a, great, that's a great feature. It's sexy. Yeah, I, like it. I, I agree, it is sexy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there was a lot of stuff that went into this, but I learned how to make circuit boards. I got to show off my maker skills to my professors and some of my classmates. Um, this is probably the most complicated project that I've ever done. And so now that I've achieved this, I feel a lot more confident. Even including that? Well, I was gonna get to that. I feel a lot more <laughs> confident being able to complete this. So uh, we're gonna put this down for a minute and we're gonna talk about, just get back to this for a split second. Um, so I'm a junior going into my senior year and me and Spencer worked on this during 2020, uh, around that time. Yeah. Um, part of the reason why I took such a long break initially was before the pandemic basically, was I got kind of stuck with some schoolwork because I was trying to tr go into a different field. So I was taking some classes to get up to speed and I didn't have very much time to make content. And I, my idea was I'm gonna come back and blow everyone away with some really awesome project. It's gonna go viral and it's gonna explain this long uh, hiatus of content. But uh, shortly after we started working together, I'd say about what a, a month or two, maybe. Yeah, pretty pretty quick. Man. Yeah, uh, the the pandemic happened, so we're trying to finish this project. We're wearing gas masks. Yeah, we were afraid that we, were <laughs> we like, thought we we're gonna die. Yeah, we we both thought that someone we were gonna get we we're gonna infect each but other. But we thought we were also smarter than COVID, so we decided we'd wear gas masks. Yeah, we're wearing. We, we had like double dual cartridge Breaking Bad respirators. <laughs> You that, had a microphone in yours, so you could still be heard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're so well prepared. Well, thank you. No, I bought it right when it hit. I thought, like, this is going to kill everyone, but I'm going to have a microphone, and I'm going to have a dual cartridge Breaking Bad respirator. Did yours go all over your head? Or was it just... I, I think we just wore the ones that don't go over your face. I had a face one, but I think we just wore the yeah, yeah. the mouth ones, and then we might have worn safety glasses to cover our eyes because it's like a mucus membrane. You know, just yeah, trying well, to... It's very, very difficult to collaborate when you're afraid you're going to get the other person sick and they could potentially die. Yeah. Uh, so that put a, a... That kind of halted things. And then um, that kind of solidified my idea to go back to school because I was... I, I didn't know if I could get through the math. Um, so, you know, I, I conquered that. And now I'm programming and doing all uh, programming microcontrollers, embedded systems, making my own circuits. Like I thought that that was all stuff that was unobtainable for me. So, uh, you know, just slowly 
working on things. I don't think that going to engineering school is essential to building this stuff, as I've kind of shown. I, think, I agree. I think that it makes. Uh, I think that it makes it easier for you to afford a lot of the components that go into it. And ideally your work as an engineer, and you could probably speak on this, there would be some overlap. Like if you work as an electrical engineer and maybe you uh, create circuits, well then maybe you can go home and actually make cool gadgets that you really want. And you've refined those skills by working in industry or, you know, if you work in CAD and you like 3D printing, you can, you know what I'm saying? That would be yeah. ideal. Yeah, well, you but. definitely learn a ton when you do it as a profession. I mean, that's undeniable. Like I, I, I said, I, bu- I built my first robot when I was 12 years old, and I started messing around with, you know, light bulbs and batteries and, you know, alligator clips when I was like seven. I love scotch tape. Yep. yep. My mom put it in my stocking for Christmas and paper clips and rubber bands. But I'll, I'll give some major milestones Sorry. of my, my development. No, 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 no. Scotch tape is great. <laughs> but I'll, I'll give some major milestones of my development. So I, I built my first, you know, like simple circuit when I was seven. I built my first robot when I was 12. I did my first what could be considered a computer program on a Texas Instruments graphing calculator when I was also 12. I, um, wow. I, you thanks. make me feel dumb. No, I mean, you know. I, but, like, I, I started messing around in machine shops when I was, like, 19 years old. Um you know, I did like woodworking like around like 13, 14. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, you know, ended up going to school for um, engineer, uh, computer science and business when I was in my early 20s. And then when I was in my later 20s, but still like mid 20s, I, I got my master's degree in robotic systems development from Carnegie Mellon. So, um, and then I, you know, meanwhile, I mean, I, I Worked at Cornell when I was 14, doing my first IT job, and then I um, got my first job out of undergrad at SpaceX uh, as an IT systems intern, and then I started getting engineering jobs. So I was a you know a hardware and sales engineering intern at Deep Local, and then after that I was a robotics uh, contract engineer at a company called Joy Global that made giant mining vehicles that I was turning into robots at the Advanced Automation Group. And then I couldn't find a place I really wanted to work, so I started SKA Custom Robots and Machines after that. I will say that, you know, I learned a lot in school. I made a lot of good friends. But really, for me, the the best educational tool has always been doing. I mean, I learned so much. Like, I, I would say I learned more in my first six months of running SKA about, you know, business and real-world engineering than I did in six years of, of schooling. And, you know, I mean, at SpaceX, I got to, you know, sit in the Dragon Rider prototype before anybody knew the Dragon Rider, like the Man Dragon, existed. I don't even know what that is. It's, it's there. Well, the, they might have changed the names. Trogdor, the then. Dragon Man? The yeah. Dragon was there. <laughs> That's funny. Did <laughs> you said the Dragon? Man Dragon? Well, the Dragon was their, their capsule uh, at the time. They, I don't know if it's still that, but it's the thing at the top of the Falcon. When they're not launching a satellite, that's the fairing. But... When they're when they're launching cargo uh, to the International Space Station, they've got an unmanned Dragon capsule, and then when they're launching people, they have a manned Dragon capsule. The man called the Dragon Rider at the time. I like that. Yeah. Trogdor. <laughs> Trogdor. <laughs> the man Dragon. Dragon. That's a good man. video. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I mean, I I always enjoyed making stuff. I always learned a lot from that. Um, you know, whatever I could get my hands on. I mean, when I was at Cornell as a 14 year old uh, working in information technology, you know, there was, I was in the chemistry department and they would have a pile of free uh, lab Talk equipment. Talk to the audience. I know so all this. They would have a pile of free <laughs> lab equipment you could grab. And um, I would always try to get my hands on whatever I could and we'd do chemistry experiments in the basement. And so I'd get friends over um, and we would try to get our hands on chemicals however we could. And just, you know, see what reactions we get to go through. I had a friend that who was the grandson really dangerous. of a Nobel like Prize woman ke- winning chemist. It was. It chlorine was very, gas and It was very, very dangerous. And and but my friend Joe McLafferty was um, the, the grandson of a Nobel Prize winning chemist. I think his name was Fred McLafferty. And he taught me all about chemistry. And so I started messing around with that. I'm not great at it, but I did that for a little bit. Um, I tried to build a robot vacuum like in the early 2000s before Roomba was a thing. Um, I, I always enjoyed 
I mean, I was doing like relays in the wall to control over a parallel port the lights in my bedroom when I was like a 13 year old. Um, and, you know, through a computer just to do like home automation. I always like making stuff. And I would say, what's you know, your most, anybody can do that. What it, what it, which project are you most confident of or uh, most proud of? Would you say? Oh, that I've done at this point in my life, like professional. If you can even talk hobby. about it. Well, I'm trying to think if I, what can I say? Um, You're a, uh, Unmanned ground vehicles is pretty awesome. That's kind of you to say. Yeah, so that one was a um, self-driving vehicle that, um, you know, was designed for the commercial construction and landscaping industry to move gravel around sites. So yeah, it, it was like a, pounds. A, a, a tank tread wheel barrel that would follow you wherever you needed to go on the job site so you wouldn't break your back lifting bags of concrete and rocks. Yeah. And... It was cool, and we filmed a commercial for it. Yeah, thank you for helping with that. Rock Tro. Yep. And that was fun. It was kind of me and Spencer uh, exchanging favors for his yep. uh, help with engineering projects and his time, and my experience as a videographer. Is Still one of the best ones con- I know. <laughs> yeah, he's got like three on this list. So, um, number one, babe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know other engineers too. Yeah. I know a good bit of engineers, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see where you end up in like five years once you get out in industry and start doing I'm gonna like paid engineering. Like you're going to, mm, I think you're going to go far. We'll see. I mean, you, you definitely are. You're a smart guy and like, you know, you've got the passion and, and you actually, you actually care about it, which I think is going to drive you to take what you learned at work and bring it home. And work on it more and and create something even better. Yeah. I guess if you want to know the thing that I... You're welcome. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. If you want to know the thing that I'm the proudest of that I've ever done in my career, there was one project that we got where a client came to us and they wanted a... um, How do I put this in a way that won't get me in trouble? They they wanted because I can't talk about what it actually is, but got those NDAs. They wanted a complicated piece of. robotic software that was supposed to take a person 18 months to make um and it was for a robot that didn't exist yet and they wanted it in two and a half months and when they came to us um they wanted uh it was really really difficult like they wanted some stuff that you could only really normally do with a graphics processing unit done without a graphics processing unit Mm -hmm. so on like arm chips so anyway so again supposed to take 18 months for a single person on their team I was able to recruit seven people, like really good engineers, and line them up and get them to put it together in two and a half months. Wow. And yeah, we we created something they loved that they continued using. It ended up in the final product. And um, I'm super proud of it. I mean, it it was a management challenge, even more than an engineering challenge. But I mean, you know, we had to get rid of a person. We brought another person up and promoted them to the lead on the project. And, um, you know, the customer was happy. We got, like, you know, testimonials. And, I mean, you know, they came back to us for more work. And it, it was it was one of the highlights of my professional career. I thought um, you were going to say it was the laser. I'm sad. No, I'm joking. I'm sorry. <laughs> the laser's cool. No, that, that's really cool because yeah. that's, like, a whole another aspect of things is the business side and, um, you know, making tough decisions about uh, who you hire and, that's just like a whole other animal that, well, you know. there's so much to learn. I mean, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to kind of mentor you on that too. And, and, you know, if you want to hear what I have to say, if you want to listen to some old windbag, <laughs> you know, happy to keep talking. But I mean, I've, I've learned a lot and I've made a lot of mistakes. And mm-hmm. every time I make a mistake, I, I become smarter because I'm not going to make that same mistake again. I put it in my journal and I make sure I don't, I don't screw up in that exact way. Hmm. And there's levels to it. I mean, you, you journal. Is that something that you recommend? I do. Yeah. I mean, every time I screw up, like, you know, it's it's easy to hate yourself when you screw up. It's easy mm-hmm. to think, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a fuck up. I, I can't do anything right. I made a major mistake. Until you learn to embrace it, and you realize that, you know. Nothing great ever gets done without mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Edison, the, the famous adage is he tried to figure out how to make the light bulb 300 times and it didn't work. And, you know, somebody asked him in the press, you know, like, you know, how did it feel to screw up 300 times? And he goes, 
I did not screw up 300 times. I figured out, you know, 299 ways not to make a light bulb or something like that. Yeah, I'm right. probably butchering it, but, you know, it's it's really true. I mean, every every error, every mistake, every rocket that blows up is is an opportunity to learn, you know, something that doesn't work and refine your approach and, and get smarter. And so I think that's really what you got to know if you want to be an engineer is, you know, how do you handle failure in, in a healthy way and, you know, approach it with a growth mentality. I mean, mm-hmm. that's maybe a little bit advanced, um, but that's uh, something I advocate for everybody that wants to go into this field. Yeah, that makes sense. I, that's, uh, it's good, I guess, to acknowledge your mistakes and in, in, in a written form. That way you can analyze them. Uh, there's definitely something about writing do you have a, a written journal, or is it like a like a paper, or is it? Oh, it's all it's all digital. digital. But still, just to document it in your mind and, and reprocess it. Yeah, and I reread it. You know, like maybe the, a couple times a year. The nuggets of information that are useful, so you don't make the same mistake. Because I think that is that is kind of a a rut that people get into is is like you said, like hating yourself. You know, whether it's procrastination or uh, and there's lots of reasons for. It. Maybe you're afraid of failure, so you don't. You know, if you don't try, then you can never fail. And um, there's, I guess, a lot of reasons why people hold back and don't jump into maybe trying to build that robot, you know, when they're 12, or maybe they don't think that they have access to the right tools or materials, you know, start off with toilet paper rolls or newspaper and, you know, paper mache and rubber bands and doesn't necessarily matter like if you look at some of the early prototypes for the oculus rift controllers they are ugly but they're ergonomic and they felt good you know they felt good in your hand and just putting that into pro into i've built some great stuff with toilet paper rolls by the way really (laughs) that's cool yeah i mean just growing up i mean you use whatever you can get you have no money as a kid so you want to you want to build stuff and you know, toilet paper roll. You can put a Radio Shack button on the well. Radio Shack's not around anymore. You put a button on the side of that and run some wires down it, and you know, a flashlight in the other end, and yeah, yeah. Have a flashlight. You know, that's whatever. cool. That I, there's a lot of those those kits out that are like subscription services where they kind of put all that stuff together. But you know, you don't necessarily you if you have the internet at your disposal, which you know, a lot of some countries, uh, you know, they they're getting affordable internet right now. You know, like we've had iPhones for years and internet access on our phones, but in some areas that's just becoming affordable because of the coverage that's available and just the, the cost of, of cell phones and, and whatnot. So th- there's just this wave of people that are being exposed to new content that they wouldn't have been able to necessarily experience because they did not they don't have time to sit in front of a computer while they're on their like you know lunch break or whatever so there's just going to be this i what i'm hoping is this new wave of of uh makers that are hopefully going to be hungry to make things and i hope that i can so my content can inspire people to take that leap uh, like one of the things that I feel like for some of my audience, um, it, it might alienate them in, in a way from the building process because, you know, I'm using, when I, before I had access to some of these tools, I'd watch a video and someone would say, oh, like I took this remote control car and turned it into this like crossbow thing where you put the, you know, bolt through it. I'm like, oh, cool. How do I do that? Oh, well, you have to 3D print this part. And it was like my heart, heart sunk because I was so excited to get started on it, but I didn't have that one 3D printer. So, you know, a lot of these builds that I've done, I'm trying to really appeal to a different audience, which is if I'm gonna look for an employer, I wanna put this in a digital portfolio, what's gonna look impressive that I know how to use a 3D printer or that I, you know, hacked some some toy. But if you're just trying to, to kind of get your bearings and learn stuff, that's where I think I started, uh, and I hope that I hope that I can have the humility to maybe go a little more into that direction, so that I can kind of 
continue to inspire from from more of I guess I could say primitive or uh, simpler manufacturing methods. You know, like you don't need a drill press. All you need is just a steady hand and a, and a, and a, a drill. Or yeah. you don't need a lathe. You can just put it in a drill and chuck it and take some sandpaper and, you know, do whatever. You know, those simple tricks that are almost like life hack videos. I'd it like, depends what you're doing, but we've all done it. And you're yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Like yeah. more not trying to flex and say, look what I have. You're not going to hit I've like CNC a mill. It's like 15 micron tolerance with a yeah. hand drill. But you can do a lot of great stuff. Totally. Yeah, so that's maybe, so I mean, leave a comment, like, what what type of content do you like as far as the builds? That, you know, this is more Hacksmith style where, you know, he is an engineering company, he's trying to show off, flex his, you know, guns, his muscles of what he can actually build from like, the professional engineering side. And then there's, you know, maybe somebody more like, I don't know, uh, Alan Pan, it's, he just wants to show that there's a proof of concept, you know, the minimum viable product, the MVP, you know, where you just tack weld some, some rockets and now you have rocket shoes. Like, will that actually do anything? You know, more of the Mythbuster style, that can be fun too. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely, with my sort of unmasking, I hope that I can bring together this audience, the audience of these makers uh, maybe have some something that's you know officially organized, where there can almost be a way to refine your skills, uh, even if it's just through a separate YouTube channel or something along those lines. But yeah, I, I definitely get a lot out of the the being like a mentor to this next generation. That that's really something that drives me I think well when you think about the number of people that have watched your videos you're definitely that yeah I and uh, on a massive scale well, one of the reasons um, every I'm sorry but yeah no, anyway, anyway, one of the, one of the reasons that I I'm always thinking of like scaling it back as far as you know your access to stuff um, I remember somebody tagged me in a post uh, or somebody emailed me their school project and they um, they came from, I think, it, I think it was somewhere in India, and uh, they were inspired to use this for their school project, which was incredible because he did it with just cardboard. And what did he make? The deployable shield. Nice. Yeah, he made the, the, the I have the Classic. shield. Uh, it's like, you know, you have a stacked triangle sh uh, shards you know, of, and then you press a button and a uh, torque motor opens it and they're all linked together with a slot at the top. So when you turn one, they all pull like a chain and you have this shield. And he made that and he lives somewhere in India, which is crazy because that's literally on the other side of the earth. And so I was able to reach them, inspire them to go use the tools they had access to. I was able to explain it in a way that they could, their minds could put it into simpler materials and then they were able to learn from it. So that's that's really uh, fulfilling and rewarding. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Whenever somebody tells me that they learned from me and, and comes to me and says, you influenced my career in a positive way, or I've got one friend in particular that was like this like skater punk I knew in high school, and he's like a software engineer in Manhattan now. Wow. And yeah, and, and he's like, you really influenced me in that direction. You're you're the reason I went into engineering. Hmm. I'm just That's like, awesome. I feel good about that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so that's that's great that you were able to get a guy in India to build a deployable shield. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just that's just a great example of the the reach and the influence that you have, which is you know. So I have to be careful what I put out there, uh, but. Yeah, it's it's been it's a been a fun ride. Um, I've enjoyed working with you. I'm looking forward to finishing up this project. Uh, actually, I forgot to ask. Sure. So as as I mentioned before, there's basically a instant blindness death ray <laughs> that sure. will melt your. It, it will immediately make you go blind permanently. Like yeah. So that's, this is gonna be for my senior design, but I wanna remove that part that's super dangerous. And so 
I insisted on it. Yeah, so <laughs> what you have here, oh, it's heavy, is the backpack. Okay, this is gonna be fun. It's okay. Yeah, you might want to move it a little more toward me to get it in frame, but toward you like this. Uh, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, like that. You sit on my lap like Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> oh wait, so I forgot. This is the this is the Mark One prototype. Uh, you want to show them to that? Yeah, yeah. So we we use this to test Watch the. Um, There's a piece oh, there. Nice. Uh, we use this to test that the software was working, and we were able to actually track the head. So it pans like this and tilts like this. Yeah, it's like a lazy Susan type bearing. Yeah, and um, that's that's kind of how we figured it out and yeah. put it on the shoulder and kind of mocked up the ergonomics of the whole thing and, yeah. and figured it out. And then that informed. Uh, I thought it looked too much like Captain Crunch because he has those like I think they're called pauldrons on his on his uniform. Is that with the Napoleonic? Yeah, yeah, like the little, like little tassels. I didn't know what those were called. I thought I thought I would look like Captain Crunch if I had, like had this here. So I, it's like you know what? Let's go with a full backpack and just go all out. It's a way better look. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so good thing you. So the laser arms. Yeah, the laser <laughs> instantly. Jesus that would be Christ. tragic. That's terrifying. So you can see the light here is going on, right? So he put these really cool. Sometimes the light goes on. Oh, there we go. Wonder why. But yeah, so that's like a fighter jet pilot switch that powers up the whole system. And then this comes up and then rotates like this. And it sits about a foot off your shoulder. And which is a lot more like Predator than it used to be. Yeah. So there's limit switches in here um, that are magnets. Well, what are they called? Magnet magnet switches? We used, I think, reed uh, switches. Yeah, reed switches. So uh, there's an, an imp a magnet that's right here that when it rotates, it triggers. So there's going to have to be some coding that goes into that yeah. so that there's interrupts. Um, it's so it knows the position, right? So you know when the magnet gets to a certain point, it's all the way deployed. Right. And then I think there's an encoder on there, too, that Turn it uses off. to track in, in between the magnet pulses. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that triple laser, triple dot laser there. But anyway, um, yeah. that's gonna go away because it's gonna hurt someone and I can't do it for school. So we have this awesome platform. Um, oh yeah, I guess I forgot about this. This was fun. Oh, the hand control, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was enjoyable to, to build. This kind of, I should like put it on. A little bit of a human we'll, we'll factor study. After. We'll edit it in. Yeah, so you, you put your hand like this and where's the camera? So you have all these buttons. So this is fire, kind of like you're pulling a trigger. Um, this is to deploy. Oh wait, I think it's backwards. But anyway. I thought red was fire, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to have it on my other hand. But anyway, okay. yeah, this is fire. This is to recalibrate it. Each has its own button. It's kind of like uh, Dr. Robotnik from Sonic the Hedgehog. He has a, a glove like this, and there's different combinations to talk to his drones. It's kind of it's similar to that in this way, but it's you know a giant chunk on your hand. <laughs> but I thought that was pretty cool. And then, I can't get it off. It's very heavy. It's very top heavy. <laughs> um, this is this is a, for the aiming head sensor. So then you have this helmet here that you wear. And I 3D printed the IMU mounts for the side. And then that goes to this wire here. And then it kind of plugs in, kind of like the matrix. But Getting to my original question, how do we make this thing not suck if we can't have the cool laser? How do we make it non-deadly? Yeah, how do we, well, I don't know. Not deadly, but blinding. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna ruin your eyes. Are you stuff. like, it has to be a laser, but it's gonna be a, like, I don't wanna put Well, I really in. wanted to see it burn stuff across the room. We'll it's, still do that eventually, yeah. like, cause that's the thing about this, it's modular. Yeah. Um, you just basically take the, uh, I guess we should have put connectors on this, right? We can connectorize it. I don't think that's impossible to do. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Like to, 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 you, you can re-terminate. Yeah. Um, add another connector so you can just plug in a new uh, type of gadget. And um, I was thinking I could take a suggestion from the comments below, but in case, so do that. <laughs> if, you, if you have any ideas, like leave a comment, definitely. But I'm gonna rattle off some that, that I've 
given some thought to. Um, so the first thing that came to mind is action heroes, which were like superhero if I'd super, if, how would you do that? Taking like ambulance, uh, EMT, yeah, uh, yeah, EMT, right? And firemen, yeah. and so uh, first responders, that type of stuff, and giving them super tech, like an axe. If you're a fireman, it's like an axe that's on on a robotic arm that like smashes the door. You know, it's just like <laughs> this reciprocating arm sma door smasher. Yeah. Um, or they had ones with like, you know, he has a fire hose on his shoulder, um, that type of, so I was thinking about doing is, since we originally were gonna use a fiber, opti fiber optic cable, is to use some Bowden tube and have like a solenoid that presses and deploys a, one of those uh, aerosol, like desk, uh, like stove top fire extinguishers yeah. So that, like, if you were a fireman and you're like walking out of the out of the <laughs> you know fire and you're carrying this like little girl or you know someone on their shoulder that's passed out, whatever, and there's a all of a sudden there's a fire in front of you, you could just like target it and you know that's like put, the opposite of what it was supposed to do. At yeah, first. yeah, it's the opposite. So instead <laughs> of burning stuff, it'll put it out, and then that way it's useful and I can do it for my school project because that would be cool. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. But yeah, comment below uh, if you have ideas for things that would be fun to see on this. Would love to see them. Uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, kind of, it's going to be better if people come up with good ideas for it. So Yeah, and then you can yeah. kind of feel like you're part of the team. And now you know what I look like, so it's not creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Send money to my chat roulette. Yeah, everyone, ch <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone uh, donate $5 to the super chat. And then, you know, if my entire <laughs> subscriber base comes together, we'll have like $3 million and Spencer's company can make us like at least an Iron Man arm. <laughs> and then I'll give you the, and then we'll open you source. You probably build more than an arm for that, but. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll oh. open source the files so you can build it for yourself, but you probably don't have the materials. So, but at least you have the option. That's kind of how it works when you like on a on a Patreon. They're like, "Here are the yeah. files." I'm like, "Thanks, yeah. Hacksmith." Like, I don't have five thousand dollars laying around to make that heads-up display helmet. <laughs> he open sources all of it. Uh, I think he has a Patreon where he, yeah, he, he does a good bit of it. He even made a battery-powered. So Iron Man can sometimes use his repulsor to like weld stuff. Yeah. So he took a. An arc welder, I think it was. It, it was something where it was almost like a, like a, a safety. It was basically a plasma cutter. That's what it was. But it was battery powered. Yeah. And he built it into a portable system. That's pretty cool. So you could actually cut through, like you see in, yeah, you just go, it was on his forearm. So you go yeah. like this. I'm like, that's really cool. But that would cost me like, Probably ten grand. Yeah. yeah. So he, here are the files. Like it's not useful. It's not economical. You just run, you know, a, a long extension cord and call it a day. But if you want to have cool stuff, yeah. Like a multi-million-dollar humanoid robot. Yeah. That'd be fun to build. Three million. Yeah. So everyone, super chat. I don't. Know, I don't think you have access to it. Maybe we'll do a live stream. What, what is super chat? Okay. Am I? Am I the? So super guy chat is when you're going when you're live streaming. Like there's so many people in the chat typically. So you, you pay some nominal fee. It could be one dollars, five dollars, that goes to the to the pay the the the, the streamer, and then you, depending on how much you spend, your name will appear in there. So you're getting acknowledgement. So like if you want to shout out, be like, hey, like I love your channel. Keep up the great work. Here's five dollars, you know. And it'll sometimes people can use OBS to. Um, create triggers so that like, if someone gives a hundred dollars, they'll be like confetti. Cause they hook, <laughs> they hook it up to a, a relay or something, you know, a Wi-Fi relay. And uh, that's what super chat is. Nice. Yeah. But- uh, That's awesome. Uh, I figured we'd plug something at the end, but we don't have to. What do you want to plug? I was gonna ask what you want to plug. Oh. And then I was gonna plug, I was just gonna I say, you know, plugs. so if you like this sort of setup, 
where we film a podcast and then I, yeah, I mean, most of you, I don't know if you want to subscribe, that's awesome. Please. You know, yeah. I, I would love you to subscribe and you can come straight here and get the content, you know, direct. We get a lot of cool people on here, people that have worked at NASA, people that own robotics companies, people that have been, uh, you know, putting robots on other planets. Uh, wow, that's cool. A lot, lot of space stuff, yeah. You gotta get better titles, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, I think <laughs> Space Roboticist is what Eddie Tunstall, the chief- it, your, your title needs to be, this engineer makes robot, alien robots, or robots on other planets, question mark? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We've had a bunch of Mars, NASA it's like shows Mars and, and like close up with a magnifying glass from a telescope and it's like this little robot. We've had a bunch of people that own like multi-million dollar robotics companies on. Um, <laughs> we've had, uh, you know, just interesting people that are doing really cool stuff. We, have, we had a surgeon on that qualifies medical robots um, That's really who cool. also is an engineer as well as being a surgeon. One of the smartest guys I know, Ken Yurish. Thanks for coming on. And <laughs> so if, if you like this kind of stuff, you want to see more of uh, me and, you know, Pablo is great gadget guru talking. Uh, please subscribe. Um, you know, thank you. And if you are interested in having a custom robot or machine built, please check out SKA Custom Robots and Machines. We do uh, contract engineering for uh, early stage new product development. So yeah, thanks for coming on, and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for joining us today. If you made it this far, chances are you'll like other episodes too. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. Subscribe today to get notified when the latest episodes release and support the channel. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is sponsored by SKA Custom Robots and Machines. If you're in the market for robotics contract engineering services, please consider hiring SKA Custom Robots and Machines. They sponsor this podcast and they solve some of the